Hey guys, what is up? It's Dusty here and welcome back to another crypto video and this is extremely important. One of the biggest Bitcoin whales is making a couple of very interesting choices right now. And when I say one of the biggest crypto whales, Bitcoin whales, I'm talking about the biggest individual Bitcoin holder in the world, meaning it's not an exchange, it's a individual or one entity that's at least not an exchange. Well, the reason I'm bringing this to y'all's attention is because apparently they just sold themselves 15.5 thousand Bitcoin in the last 24 hours. Again, guys, it's kind of hard to extrapolate exactly what to do with this information, but it might be hinting that even though Bitcoin right now is pushing 23,000, doing really amazing, that we should be fearful of a slight little dump and maybe the big will actually knows or the big will knows, okay, all right, he's been buying up at 19,000, 20,000, 18,000, 20,000, 21,000. Right now, he's finally in a juicy amount of profit. Hey, let me quickly sell a significant amount of money because, well, that's logical, right? Whenever you can make a lot of money, you very often do, at least in this instance. So for a little bit, I've tried to kind of look and extrapolate exactly um, whether or not their sales actually make a significant dent or anything like that in the price. And actually, it looks to be kind of vice versa. How can I say that? Like, it's a little bit strange to know exactly what they've been up to, nor or at least whether or not it makes a difference. So here in blue, we have the balance in Bitcoin. In gray, we have the Bitcoin price. And in red, we have the balance in USD. I honestly recommend not looking too much at the red one, but looking mostly at the blue and the um, the gray ones. But then looking at it, okay, they've dumped a lot of Bitcoin at this point uh, right here, right? So somewhere in January of 2021. And right afterwards, the Bitcoin price started to pump. And while it was pumping, they decided to buy a lot more. Maybe their strategies are unbeknownst to us. I just thought it would be worth it to quickly share with you guys. That's something interesting is going on as they have a lot of freaking Bitcoin. You guys understand? Having said that, and I got to keep saying this in all the videos because it really helps. I've noticed every time I say it, it just... Poof. If you did not do it just quite yet, make sure you help these videos out by pressing that like button. I appreciate it a ton. I go home happy, you know, even though right now I'm actually in, uh, in Greece on a little island having fun. I, I'll, I'll just I'll walk home, all right? I'm going to walk home to Dubai for you guys because you all press that like button, right? In, in a couple of minutes after, you know, I see the likes on this. No idea what I'm trying to say here. I'm, I'm dumb. Whatever. And if you want to trade, make sure you check out the links down below, you know? I'm just saying, you know, why not? <laughs> It's very much worth it, you know, I keep saying it, but uh, there's also a Telegram link down below. That's where I share a lot of my trades and trading ideas. Highly recommend you guys to check it out. All right, little piece that's also quite interesting is the Fear and Greed Index. Right now, the Fear and Greed Index is at 30, which is actually funny enough, right? You would think, oh, that's pretty low. Zero to 130 is pretty low. It's actually the highest number we've seen in 73 days. So for the last 73 days, we were in extreme fear. And right now is the first day in a couple of months that we are in normal fear, <laughs> you know, things are doing good again, huh, I guess. Over the last three months, you can kind of see it for yourself right here. Last time we saw 30 was most likely somewhere along these lines, maybe not even in the last three months. Uh, maybe, actually, maybe the number 30 has been hit even longer ago. I just know for a fact that it was uh, about 73 days since we saw this um, fear, but I'm, I'm not sure exactly what number constitutes at fear and, and which number is extreme fear and whatnot. I'm not too read in on all those. And what this basically showcases is the market sentiment, right? Are people uh, bearish? Are people fearful? Logically, that's what the name suggests. It's actually based upon social media, volatility, market momentum slash volume, dominance, and trends. So whenever this number is going down, well, people are fearful or the trend is less or the volatility is less and whatnot. And again, the higher the number goes, the, the better that the social media, for example, is doing and things of that sort. All the while, the, the, the big Bitcoin whale is kind of taken off. You know, the Ethereum whales, funny enough, are accumulating like crazy as the merge, of course, is approaching. And one of the interesting things I read to you guys earlier was I think a lot of Ethereum whales want to stack up right now because they got the chance to do so still uh, before the official merge comes in and maybe people will flock it. As again, due to ESGs, I think the moment that the, the merge actually goes through, a lot of institutional clients will start to hoard Ethereum as they're now more so allowed to, or at least can now explain to their investors more so like, hey, we want to expose ourselves to Ethereum. You got to remember, guys, these funds have a lot of trouble con con convincing their clients or at least their, 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 their funders, let's call it like that, to invest into crypto. And here's, for example, one of the, I guess, huge, huge funds 
Scaramucci Skybridge has actually in crypto, right? Suspended a withdrawal from their fund with exposure to crypto because again, the crypto has been going down so much. Now this fund specifically is 18% crypto, but also crypto companies like FTX, for example, it's pretty huge, but they basically said one of our lesser funds, Legion Strategies is projected to have assets under $230 million. On suspending redemptions, Scaramucci stressed they are temporarily suspension until we can raise capital carried out alongside an independent board and that the fund is unlevered, so there's absolutely no fear of liquidation whatsoever. The last point I like to make is everyone signed in an investor agreement with this type of flexibility. So I don't think there's any surprise here with what's going on in the overall market, but the good news is we're catching a bounce now and I think things are going to get better. The thing here, right, and that's the most important thing you gotta understand, is the, these guys are not over leveraged. These guys are not doing this for the sake of, um, for the sake of, how do you say, not having enough liquidity, so to speak, right? It's, it's mostly a strategy of, hey, people are all take it out right now. We can't, what then, right? We don't have enough, the money is down a lot. It's just not a strategical thing. So one of the things they could go for is, you know, a chapter 11 bankruptcy, like we talked about before, where it's just a major restructuring. But I think it's necessary because they signed the agreements properly that, hey, we don't really have any troubles, but it would just be a lot better in our situation to kind of hold it back. Let's do that. At the end of the day, you might say, oh, it's overexposed or so, like with Celsius or whatnot. Well, I, I personally think that banks and everything like that, they all do the same thing as Scaramucci's guys are doing right now in the sense of, let's say there's actually a little bit of a bank run or a little bit of a liquidity problem or a little bit of a, if we're to, if people were to pull out like crazy, our investments would be severely hurt, which is not profitable for all the other investors. So let's just kind of try to um, go around that if possible and if the agreement allows for it. I think it's different than what Celsius did with just over leveraging and being overexposed to the to the, to the risks, basically, because I think Scaramucci, the guys, they can fund it if they want, right? They can get out of this completely unharmed if they really want to, but it will be very less profitable a lot for the people that invested into it as well. So they're thinking, okay, let's go for a long-term term strategy. Let's deploy this. Only contrary fact that I can say is, well, if you expose yourself to funds, you're playing by their rule book, and that's also why you might get you effed in the A at some point or another, because, well, if they say you can't withdraw for the next seven years, I'm not sure what you agree to, but that could be very annoying if you wanna get your money out, right? And the same thing you're having with Voyager and whatnot, now they went for bankruptcy, very annoying. Same thing for Celsius, you might never see your money back, who knows? So take your money off of exchanges that you don't know too much about. And uh, also not in too many of these funds that you don't know too much about but whatever. All right. Bitcoin sustains short-term uptrend as risk on assets are gaining momentum. Exactly. That's what we're seeing right now. As I said before, guys, don't get overhyped. There might be something happening in the markets that we're not seeing, right? We have this 200 weekly moving average, of course, that's looming. But also, why is this whale dumping such a significant amount of Bitcoin akin to what we saw about here in January of 2021? Again, the price did not budge. Actually, fun fact, the price actually went pretty severely up right after that dump was um, done. But it's something to consider. Again, guys, I'm not sharing this with you for any of the conclusions, as it's kind of hard to say. All I know is that this will has been buying significantly, for example, in the March 2020 dip, right? You can see here, they went from a balance of uh, 34,000 Bitcoin to about 43,000 Bitcoin in the span of that little week. So they bought a significant amount of Bitcoin when Bitcoin was at a $3,000 uh, a dip at that point, for example, and they've been stacking up, stacking up, stacking up. And only once things are actually starting to pump, you can actually see it this way, right? They're offloading at points where they think, okay, you know what? We've gotten a crazy pump. We're dumping out a little bit. Let's actually de-risk, take some money out. And then funny enough, the crypto markets start to pump again. They're like, okay, you know what? We actually have a lot more um, power. Maybe let's just keep on buying for the next big, blah, blah, blah. and okay, they, okay, we're in profit. Let's sell some, let's sell some, maybe, right? Just thinking with the guys here. It's kind of hard to extrapolate because they've just been accumulating over longer periods of time. But I guess that's also one of the things to keep note of is that they went from number one, eight, number 81 will to number three will in the world, I believe, um, with this um, uh, wallet of theirs. And I guess the only way you can get there is if you just keep on buying like a freaking madman, right? I'm just saying, watch out for it. Keep it in the back of your head. At the end of the day, though, guys, things are looking really good and I'm still extremely bullish on the matter. And I know that these whales are too, so it's not a big problem at all. If you just hold on, nothing will change. Just letting you guys in on this little uh, analytical piece. And I'll see you guys again in another crypto video later today.